What's up, my peoples? This is Rob of Wise Life. What's up, Israel? How's everybody doing out there on this hot morning? Uh, wanted to come to you with a short video. All praises be given to the Most High, who is Yahuwah. All right, he is our, our Savior, our Sovereign, and our King. And I just wanted to lift him up uh, only, all right? Because I, I, I represent him and I serve him only, all right? Today's uh, message is entitled Fear and Guilt. And I'm, I'm playing off uh, some words that Creflo Dollar said the other day when he was uh, explaining to people that he uh, has been teaching tithing wrong uh, for all these years. And so uh, he used, and I'm paraphrasing, can't remember exactly what he said, but he basically said that the church has been using fear and guilt, all right, to uh, manipulate the people over the years, all right? And so I've been thinking about uh, this, this, uh, this thought in my head for the last, you know, pro probably back to a year, you know what I'm saying? How uh, fear, you know, and guilt have been, you know, pushed against people who are in church. When I was in church, I was in church for a long time, was a, was a key integral part of, uh, of the church I got, the church that I baptized my children in, the church that I became a deacon in, and all those, all those other uh, things that I did. Uh, but um, that church did use fear and guilt against me and my family. All right, that church used fear and guilt against all the members in various uh, ways, and oftentimes it was just despicable, despicable behavior. By the leadership and I'm and I've been to enough churches to know it's happening in every church all right and I know this is bigger than a church issue this is a religion issue because all religions have their their own quirks and their own uh, manipulative ways of how they deal with the people and how they hold the people down uh, but this short message right here is I'm just trying to break people free you know what I'm saying I'm trying to trying to help set people free and help uh, change people's mind on how they should view uh, the most high, how they should view seeking the most high. All right. Uh, so I want to start. I, I, I just I have four things, four ways. All right. That the church uh, uses four things that the church uses to uh make people afraid and make people feel guilty about uh, searching for the truth and uh, even changing their position on, on how they how they think and how they believe all right so and I'm gonna I'm list them from uh, least from what I think my opinion on the least uh, harmful to the most harmful all right all right so number four counting down from four to one number four is They'll call you a false prophet or a heretic. All right, so let's go to uh, 2 Peter 2. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2, all right, in the KJV. 2 Peter 2, and I'm going to read the first verse. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. All right. And so, when when I say that the New Testament Messiah uh, is not Israel's savior, and that Yahuwah is Israel's savior, I'm I'll be called a false prophet by the majority. All right. And now I'm okay with that, but I used to be afraid of that. All right. I used to I used to feel guilty for challenging that. All right. Because that's that's what's been embedded when we were conquered and we were we were uh, brought into oppression and suppression. All right. That's something that was that was so-called that was kind of beat into us. That was forced on us. All right. We, we had to believe the way our conquerors believe. And it's time to come out of that mentality. We can no longer be be afraid of searching for the truth and seeking the father only. All right. Now, uh, 
I, I got two verses uh, for each of these uh, components, all right? All right, the second verse I want to go to is Titus 3, all right? And Titus 3 is a funny one because you find uh, people out there everywhere that challenge you. Once you've denied what they say a couple of times, they seem to be able to break this commandment that they have. So those that believe in the New Testament, this is a commandment for them. And they seem to break this all the time like it's nonchalant. But of course, uh, the, the New Testament Messiah will forgive you know, everybody of their sins, you know, so they, they can break as many commandments as they want because they're going to be forgiven by, by that JC character, right? All right, and no matter what you call him, whether you call him Yahushua, Yahweh, Yeshua, uh, Yahshua, no matter what you call him, no matter what color you put on him, all right, that character is still your God, all right, and we're supposed to serve only Yahuwah, all right? All right, uh, Titus 3, verses 9 and 10 says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. If we're supposed to avoid genealogies, why they that why they work so hard to put them genealogies in in the gospels? There's a question. Anyway, uh, verse ten is the one I want to get to though. A man that is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. So when you tell when when the the New Testament believers uh, come to somebody. A couple times at least a couple times and that person rejects them or, or doesn't believe like they believe or won't accept what they're saying they supposed to leave them alone all right they supposed to leave them alone now my idea of why they supposed to leave them alone because uh, a person like me if they keep coming at me you know I might be able to to you know uh, flip them to to the truth you know what I'm saying so that's why they told to leave them alone in, in my opinion but uh, most in most cases, I won't even I won't even bother with somebody after the first or se after the the first or second time. I'm not gonna mess with them no more if they ain't ain't trying to you know see see what I I've been shown. So I mean it's to me it's wasted energy. Now don't get me wrong, you can plant a seed and come back to that re you know the 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 most one the most high, the mighty one can send circle you back to them. But at the end of the day, once you once you deliver you drop that hammer and deliver the message to them. Especially after that second time, you know what I'm saying. On on my end, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna look at this as as good advice. You know what I'm saying. Don't mess with them no more. And if you end up coming back to them years later, months later, years later, or whatever, you know, it might be a decade or whatever. But if they come back to you, hey Rob, man, can we can we uh, can we discuss what we discussed years ago, man? Because you might be on to something. Can you share with me what you got? And, all right, I, I might be willing to do it that way if they come in humility. And, and genuinely wanting to know what I, what I think. But other than that, man, it's a wrap. I'm, I'm not fenced to mess with you. It's wasted energy in my eyes. All right? All right, so number three, all right, the third thing that, that, that the church tries to use, fear and guilt, to, to keep its members and stuff, all right, betrayal and disloyalty, all right? Uh, they, they'll say you'll be cursed, all right? So turn with me to Matthew chapter 10 we're gonna see what the what the new testament messiah the salvistic son of the new testament we're gonna see what he had to say about uh of talking about betrayal and and, and disloyalty and stuff like that all right uh matthew 10 all right and i think hold on going to my bible app here yeah matthew 10 37 yep Yep, yep. All right, so these is red letter right here. This is red letter, so you know that it's supposedly the the new New Testament Messiah saying this. It says he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter daughter more than me is not worthy of me. All right, only somebody who declares to themselves as God can say something like that. Yahuwah didn't tell Yahuwah in the Old Testament said there's no one beside him. He knows not anyone else that, that is like him. So only he would be worthy of, of saying something like that. All right. And so they but that this verse is there to uh, kind of uh, deflect us from going further into that. From from challenging who he who he may be. And and, and from from where I'm standing, he, he's he's false. He's not for Israel. I right, remember, I, I've said in many videos, everything is connected to Israel. 
for those that don't believe that, keep uh, keep believing that way. The Father gonna set this thing straight. You know what I'm saying? It ain't in my hands or your hands. The Father gonna set this thing straight. All right. Uh, let now turn with me to Luke. Luke 22. Luke 22. Sound like a gun. <laughs> I got my Luke 22. All right. Uh, Luke 22, we're going to read verses 3 through 5. It says, Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. All right, so you got the Judas character that they have here. It's like they wanted to take Judas Maccabeus. They wanted to use that name and tarnish it. Judas Maccabeus' name. Go look up Judas Maccabeus, all right? But they wanted to tarnish him because he was doing good for Israel. He was fighting for Israel, all right? And so uh, it's like they wanted to use that name to tarnish it, all right? So anytime you hear Judas, you immediately think evil, right? All right? And you immediately think betrayal, all right? You, you automatically think disloyalty, okay? And so they use that as a fear and a guilt tactic to get your emotions all riled up and, and to for, for you not to go investigate things. Go investigate Judas Maccabeus. All right? And why, why we ain't told that as, as part of biblical history. All right. They, they say it ain't canon and all that kind of stuff. But who is the man, the men that were creating canon? It, it just it, it makes no sense to me. All right. If, if, if certain stuff lines up with with the Old Testament. All right. Then, you know, you, you got to give account to it. All right, you got to give some credence to it. You just have to. All right. So the the so counting down from four to one, we're at number two now. The second most important way that they use fear and guilt against us, we will be cursed. All right. Now here here's here's the 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 thing right here. All right, the father cursed the man in Genesis. All right. So the cur there's always gonna be curses with us. All right. We we have to work. You know what I'm saying? For for what we want and what we need. We have to work for it. All right. For the father to Barack us. So I mean that that was a curse in itself. All right. But they, they use curse loosely and just throw it all all kind of ways. It's, it's like a video game or something. They they able to use all kind of stuff to to uh, get they they messages and they points across without us having without us actually challenging it. We're too afraid or we feel too guilty to go challenge what they're saying in this New Testament. All right. And so uh, go to uh, Galatians chapter one, verses six through nine. Galatians chapter one, verses six through nine. They, they scare us like this. All right. They make us afraid like this. Check it out. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. All right. But thou, but though we or any angel or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Nine, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. I'm not preaching no gospel. I'm not preaching no good news. I'm just telling people what the, what the words say in the Old Testament. The New Testament is not the word. All right, the Old Testament, the Hebrew origin is the word. All right, and there, there are some, some que uh, still questions I got about the, the, the Old Testament. All right, but I, I, I found enough about the New Testament to know that, that we shouldn't be, that Israel should not be attached to this stuff. All right, this is other nations' gods. This is other nations' gods. And they make us afraid by telling us that we're cursed if we, if we believe in something else. All right, we cursed anyway, though. Go read Deuteronomy 28, all right? Once the blessings and the curses hit the people, all right? We, we was going to be blessed and we was going to be cursed. You can't escape being cursed. Israel can't anyway. We connected to the Father and we still are in captivity. We still in punishment. The curses is attached to us. The curses is a sign of who we are. Ain't no New Testament Messiah wiped them curses out. This stuff, this stuff is not right. It's not actual. It's not actual, it's not factual. All right. The next verse I want to go to, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 22. This is some people's uh, favorite verse. All 
All right. Some people like to like to uh, pump this verse, you know, to make people make people afraid because because it's got this it's a this nice little uh, funny sounding you know word combination here. It says, "If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha." All right, or let 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 the let their JC character come come swiftly uh, and curse them. Uh, let them be cursed as the as the JC character comes swiftly. All right, some kind of combination like that. All right, and so that when they put that that name, the L, that Lord JC there, all right, that name carries so much weight on the on the majority of of the world that people are afraid to go against him. They're afraid to 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 say he ain't true. They're afraid to say he ain't the only way. All right, so. That, I mean, it, it just makes them afraid. It, it, it makes people guilty, all right? And the number one reason, if you haven't guessed already, the number one reason that, uh, or the number one component that churchianity, Christianity, however you want to say it, you know, the, the, the most major religion in the world uh, makes people fear, fear and have guilt uh, for possibly challenging them on things and and not no longer calling it the truth, a loss of salvation. All right, that's the number one thing. They'll they'll tell you 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 ain't saved. All right, let's go to John fourteen and six. Some of y'all knew where I was going. Let's go to John fourteen and six. All right, it says, Jesus said unto him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't get to the Father. You can't be saved by the Father unless you go through the New Testament Messiah, Salvistic Son. And I, I just, I can't find nowhere in the Old Testament that agrees with that. I can't find nowhere in the in the, in the old script, or not the old script, anywhere in the script that agrees with that. Because the New Testament is not scripture. It's just a bunch of letters and epistles and, and writings. It's not scripture. This is some, This is a whole new doctrine. All right? This is a doctrine that goes against what Yahuwah said in the Old Testament. And they use this fear. This is the major fear tactic right here. You can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. Well, in a sense, that's true because everything's connected to Israel. And we know that Israel is Yahuwah's son. He said it out of his own mouth. All right. Uh, and then the last verse I want to look at is Hebrews chapter six. Now you can you can go over to Hebrews and have some fun. They were, it's crazy how Hebrews was written in Greek. That just <laughs> Hebrews six. All right. We're going to start at verse four. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Now that right there, it sounds scary already. <laughs> that's kind of, that sound that's some scary stuff right there. Oh boy. Uh I don't want it. I mean that word impossible makes it scary. Alright? Who were once enlightened. The Father didn't want us to be enlightened. The Father wanted us to be obedient, period. Obedience has nothing to do with enlightenment. Obedience has everything to do with whatever the Father say you you do. And when you when you you fail at at doing that, you repent and ask for forgiveness and get back in alignment. It's that simple. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, because life, you know, tosses us, you know, in various directions and and has its various roller coaster ride for us. It it yes, we gon we gon make some mistakes. But the Father is merciful. All right, he is fa he, he gives us favor. All right. Verse five, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Six, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. But if you go read in Ezekiel. It says, if the wicked turn from his wicked ways and, and walk in righteousness, the Father will forgive him. So which is it? The New Testament and the Old Testament, they they are colliding with each other. They they banging with each other. They fighting. They, do, they are not in alignment. All right. So 
this this is going to conclude my video and i just i want to encourage those out there who are doing their own seeking and their own searching to continue to do so trust in the father alone look at the world right now look at everything that's going on in this world all right and learn to learn to just pray to the father and let him protect you all right let him guide you this new testament messiah is not our salvation israel is not connected to the new testament messiah all right Israel is connected to, there's going to be a leader that the Most High said he's going to raise up amongst the people to lead the people, all right? But it, it, he, it never says in the Old Testament that he's going to send the same person twice to save us, all right? To, he going he gonna to recall him to heaven to sit on his right hand. It ain't nowhere in there that somebody's sitting on his right hand. And then he's going to send him back. That, man, that stuff is made up, all right? So, I mean, and, and you guys... You can call it my opinion all you want, all right? If you don't agree, hey, that, that's your prerogative and that, that is your choice. You get to do that and choose that. You get to live your own life and go on through. I mean, it, it says in the Word, too, that, uh, that good people will have wicked done to them and wicked people will have good done to them, all right? So I, I know there's going to be going to be times where it may seem like you know, certain people are, are you know, that the Most High ain't on their side. But if we don't go through stuff, I mean, that means the Most High ain't, ain't testing us. And he said he gonna, he gonna purify his people. So at the end of the day, if you still stuck in that fear and guilt mode, all right, if you still allowing the church to make you afraid or any religion to make you afraid uh, into looking into their true, whether it's true or not, and trying to find the most accurate, uh, the most accurate thing that connects to the Father, the most accurate things that connect to the Father. If you're afraid to go do that, then hey, uh, what I, I, I'll say something that the New Testament said. Then you ain't worthy of the Father. You know what I'm saying? But the Father is merciful, and we got as long as as long as you woke up today, you got time. Just go look, and if you don't agree, then you don't agree. It's that, it's that simple with me. But hey. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful weekend. Much love to you. Thanks for watching. Shalom and shalom.